Well, who could have possibly predicted this, except for the entirety of the left, as there is some stunning new data out showcasing that Tim Walls may have the ability to help Kamala Harris to a greater degree than the mainstream thinking originally thought. So I'm going to get to that stunning data in a bit here. I'm also going to get to comments from Barack Obama at the DNC last night where he briefly discussed Tim Walls, as that was a fun clip. But first here, so before I get to the Tim Walls portion of this, this is from Focal Data. This is their polling between uh, Harris and Trump. So it's from the same uh, the same poll, the, the Walls data that, that I'll get to later. But here they have Harris and Trump, both head-to-head -head or in a five-way race. I got to say, I don't... I don't really know the point of these head-to-head -head races unless third-party candidates aren't on the ballot. If they're going to be on the ballot, why even cut them up like this? Like, it should be the five-way race in every poll, or it should be whoever's going to be on the ballot in that state should be in the poll. That makes the most sense to me. So the head-to-head -head stuff really just shows you, I guess, where some of the support's being pulled from. So when it comes to Arizona, for example, so Harris is leading in five out of seven swing states. Uh, she's l losing in Arizona in both the head-to-head -head and the five-way. But you see here, Kennedy is pulling at least a, or about a point more from Trump in uh, the five-way compared to the head-to-head. -head. So in the five-way, Harris is only down by a point compared to Trump. And the head-to-head, -head, down by a few points. So again, just going to what I discussed in a previous video where Kennedy is appearing to pull more, at least a bit more, from Donald Trump. But so Harris is losing in Arizona and Georgia in this poll uh, in, in both scenarios, but winning in Michigan, Nevada, North Carolina, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin, this would win her the election. So good news so far. I'm actually, so the Georgia numbers I'm kind of surprised by, because even when we get to the favorables, they just seem really out of whack compared to the other states. But let's move on to that. So let's start with Donald Trump's net favorables. So again, same data, or same um, polling outlet focal data here. Georgia, he is plus six, which again, seems like an, or is an outlier here. Arizona minus five, Pennsylvania minus eight, North Carolina minus nine, Nevada minus 10. Uh, there are two Nevadas. I, one of these are Wisconsin. So it's either the minus, uh, minus 11 or the minus 10. And uh, Michigan here, minus 13. Compared that to Kamala Harris where she's only down in Georgia. So Trump down across the board, except for Georgia. Harris only down in Georgia. Everywhere else, she is Michigan plus seven, Nevada plus three, Pennsylvania plus two, Wisconsin plus one, Arizona even, North Carolina even, which is a good place to be. Again, this this shows potential for growth in, uh, in these swing states. Georgia, again, again, I don't know. I'm not sure what's going on with Georgia here. <laughs> it feels bizarre to me that it would be this this uh, much of an outlier, but there it is. Now, let's take a look at the VPs. Starting with J.D. Vance, who again, plus seven in Georgia is so weird, but there you go, plus seven in Georgia. Uh, Pennsylvania minus three, Arizona minus five, North Carolina minus five, Wisconsin minus 10, Nevada minus 11, Michigan minus 14. Let's compare this to Tim Walls, which by far has the most stunning results here. Look at this. Michigan, plus 14. Arizona, plus 9. Wisconsin, plus 9. Nevada, plus 7. Georgia, plus 5. North Carolina, plus 4. Pennsylvania, plus 4. Nothing below a plus 4 on this list. Tim Walls currently is the most popular person, or I should say the most favorable person on any of these, uh, on, on these tickets. Now, it's normal for, you know, a national figure like Kamala Harris to have more negatives because that's just how politics works. But uh, for Tim Walls to be doing this well, especially in the states that matter, shows you that he has the ability to help Kamala Harris in these incredibly important states. My guess for why he's maybe at a plus four in Pennsylvania compared to... Um, you know, or I should say, I think he's a plus four because I, Josh Shapiro is probably who a lot of Pennsylvanians wanted to be Kamala Harris's VP. But still, plus four <laughs> when you got snubbed, still pretty good. Now, I want to show you uh, some comments here from Barack Obama. 
during uh, his speech last night. She'll work on behalf of every American. That's who Kamala is. And in the White House, she will have an outstanding partner in Governor Tim Walz. Let, let, let me tell you something. Let me, let, 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 let me tell you something. I love this guy. Tim is the kind of person who should be in politics. Born in a small town, served his country, taught kids, coached football, took care of his neighbors. He knows who he is, and he knows what's important. You can tell those, those flannel shirts he wears don't come from some political consultant. They come from his closet, and they have been through some stuff. This goes to one of Tim Walz's biggest advantages over not just J.D. Vance, but other politicians at the national level generally. His authenticity. Tim Walz is the real deal. And it is incredibly tough to find someone like this at the national level. Most politicians that have to get to the kind of level that Tim Walz is at as a, you know, a VP pick, you have to sell out generally. That's, that's how it, things have worked for a long time. But Tim Walz has not. He's, he's a guy who has spent, spent most of his life in a different career, is a veteran, was a high school teacher, then got into Congress, and has been doing that since 2006. Yet, check this out. If you're not, if you're not aware of this, this to me, is maybe the most impressive thing about Tim Walls and really shows you how real this man is. According to Fortune, Tim Walls' net worth is less than the average American's. Together with his wife, Gwen, his net worth is $330,000 per the Wall Street Journal. This shows you his focus in life has not been acquiring wealth. His focus has been service. Do you understand how incredibly rare it is for someone like this to, first of all, be in Congress just generally, but to also get picked to be on a presidential ticket? This is wild. You will never, it is very unlikely that you will have the opportunity to vote for someone like this on a ticket, on, on a presidential ticket ever again. Because it just doesn't happen. Someone like this just does not get to the kind of power that Tim Walls is getting close to. So, like, th this goes to, again, how... It, the reason why authenticity matters is because it... it is, this is somebody who is actually able to relate to the problems of everyday people. Someone who has spent his life in service interacting as a high school uh, teacher as a congressperson, as a governor, with real people. And this also goes together, you know, with his, as I've covered in the past in other videos, the massive agenda that he passed with a one-seat majority in Minnesota as governor, things that actually help people. Like, this is, I am just so incredibly impressed that not only does Tim Walls it, exist as a person, uh, as a, a member of Washington, but that he was actually picked by Kamala Harris. I think this is the best thing she has done so far because it, it signifies that Kamala Harris is not picking, you know, is, is not choosing her uh, her priorities based on, I should be clear, not simply based on whatever, you know, powers are around in the Democratic Party in terms of moneyed powers. But she has an agenda that she actually wants to pass. Because why else would you pick someone like Tim Walls? She wants a connection to real people. Tim Walls has that connection, that connection that no other VP choice would have had, at least in the same way. So it's just, it's massive. And you have even Fox News here having to admit that Walls is more popular than J.D. Vance. So their headline here, Walls unknown by four in 10 Americans, but favorability rating tops Vance. So approximately four in 10 U.S. adults don't know enough about Walls to form an opinion compared to three in 10 for Vance. Now, the headline doesn't even give you the full picture here. So this is a, the Associated Press NORC Center for Public Affairs Research poll. So Walls is currently enjoying a higher level of support among U.S. adults, maintaining a 36% favorability rating compared to Vance's 27. 
This is compare, uh, sorry, compounded by Vance's higher unfavorability rating among those polled, with 44% holding an unfavorable view compared to Walls at 25%. This means Walls is a plus 11 overall compared to Vance, who's a minus 17 overall, which is a, a spread of almost 30 points. Now, it's impossible to really know the impact that a VP choice has on a ticket, but if there's going to be an impact, it's going to be in this sort of matchup, where it is the two are just so far apart in terms of favorability, where Walls is clearly more liked than JD Vance's. So, you know, in a scenario like this, I actually do think the uh, pick can have an impact, especially when you bring in how popular walls appears to be in uh swing states now i want to share this clip this was from the rally in wisconsin la or sorry in milwaukee last night oh yeah i mean milwaukee wisconsin uh while the dnc was going on so dnc happening in chicago this happening in milwaukee this rally was held at the same stadium or the same uh arena that the RNC was held at. Yet it appears that the crowd may be bigger at this rally <laughs> compared to the RNC. Now, I don't care about comparing crowd sizes too much. I don't think it means a whole lot, really, in the grand scheme of things. But some people do care about that. So you uh, you can imagine Trump won't be happy about this. But here's some comments from Tim Walz. And J.D. Vance, he writes the foreword for the architect of the Project 2025. Look, you can find joy in the world everywhere. Here's where I find my joy. On October 1st, we're going to have a little talk, he and I, on the same stage. So, <laughs> Yeah. I am so looking forward to this debate. Look, uh, the Kamala Harris Trump debate, I'm also, of course, looking forward to because I'm a political weirdo. I like watching this stuff. I find it interesting i'm sure that'll be fun but you kind of know what to expect like trump's going to be ridiculous and an idiot and lie the entire time kamala harris i think will do a a pretty good job but who knows i mean kamala harris was great in that primary debate in 2020 um again <laughs> against joe biden uh and then didn't really show up the the next few debates but when it comes to a one-on-one -on -one, i think this is kind of where kamala harris shines i think she'll do great against donald trump but when it comes to Tim Walls, JD Vance, I just don't like. I don't. I don't really like. I don't really know what to expect. I kind of know what to expect in terms. Of I think. I think Walls is going to do a lot better. But just in terms of the interaction between these two, JD Vance is so incredibly inauthentic while attempting to have this working class appeal that Walls actually has. So the phoniness of JD Vance, I think, is going to come out. Is going to be become even more apparent when he's sitting next to. Tim Walls. That's that's my guess, but again, I don't know. It's it's we don't really know exactly what to expect because we haven't seen these two. At least I haven't seen these two in debates. I know JD Vance. Uh, there were some debates when he was running for Senate, and you know he, he just he's very boring. <laughs> so, he's very boring, very standard politician, very fake. Uh, and when you're ha when you have a guy like that next to Tim Walls, I just think it's it's going to make you look even worse. So this just on the uh, on that rally. So Harris holds rally at Milwaukee Arena where Trump accepted the Republican nomination RNC. So uh, just like I said, this is the crowd there. So uh, the Harris campaign says more than 15,000 people showed up to the Harris Walls uh, rally in Milwaukee. Just a uh, massive, massive and excited crowd there. I, I don't have clear numbers on the RNC. That I, I think they were saying uh, they had said that 20,000 people were attending. I don't know if that means they were actually in the seats during the speeches at the RNC. But if you go back and look at some of those images, it, it, they don't look full. <laughs> and the way the stage is set up is different as well. So the, this just appears to have more, more of an ability for people to sit. But uh, I don't know. Regardless, who cares? Whatever. Crowd size. It's just... This is the kind of thing that gets under Trump's skin.